Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. I'm going to give a lecture on advocacy and anti in discrimination and how one can apply advocacy and anti discrimination principles in the practice of your daily work, whatever work that would be. I'm going to demonstrate the handling of a situation in my own uh, particular work. Um, and how I used advocacy and implemented anti-discrimination uh, practice. The problem, over a period of six months, over 20 young people from the estate began to come to our church service, the 6 p.m. service. Only eight people attended, all of them elderly. They found the young people intimidating young people these young people were well behaved and most of the time but the adults and leaders of the church really did not want the young people the situation came to a head when one leader almost lost his temper which made the young people even more rowdy than they could be I was running the evening service and common sense said don't let the young people into the service or provide alternative weekday service but these young people were happy to sit in the service. Is it right? The solution. In the end I felt that the congregation had rights and also the young people. So I organized a service for the young people after the 6, 6 p.m. service at 7.30 p.m. This caused problems I was run as I was running a youth work and I was resources to do it. Reflection. My knowledge of anti-discrimination made me realize that people can feel oppressed. I realized the old and young would experience oppression in different ways. The young need a place to hang out, the old need a place to worship. Second, my skills in anti-discrimination made me take proactive measures. I often try to help the young and old appreciate each other's needs often by telling stories of individuals. I also got young, the young to, uh, to do practical jobs in the church. Third, equal opportunities is something we worked on in our class with, the, with them. I felt that the young had little value in the community and I tried to open the young to see they are valued and had a future was evident in this situation. You could see how the old people wanted more of a strict way of dealing with young and this had come from their upbringing. The young were flippant to the old and this came from the broken social heritage of the estate. I'd like now to talk about some key aspects of advocacy. What is advocacy? Why should we practice advocacy? and how does advocacy work? Number one, what is advocacy? Advocacy is a, mean to a means to empower those who have no power. It is a practical way of helping individuals and groups who are on the edge of society. Advocacy seeks to listen, respect and defend the rights of helpless people. There are different types of advocacy. Advocacy generally speaking means the process quote of pleading a court advocacy means helping the disadvantaged. Self-advocacy means helping people to help themselves. This is really people being their own advocates. Collective advocacy is when a group of people come together to, to, campaign, to campaign on issues affecting more than one individual. In essence, an advocate is a citizen who is independent of human services, who creates a relationship with a person, who is a social inclusion, so, who is socially excluded in some way, either through class, gender or any other issue. An advocate will then press for the rights of such a person. Advocacy has many, many positive elements. It is a way of creating social inclusion. It is also gives hopes to the underdog and it gives people of prejudice aware of being challenged in a creative dimension. Also it brings healing to those by social exclusion. The details of ad advocacy need to be remembered. 
It is a partnership between two people. One of the partnership is disabled, the other person is not. If a person is going to be an advocate, one has to remember you have to be loyal to the clients. Advocates have to be open to a creative process in conflict resolution, meaning you have to work with other groups who can help you. Advocates should set their own goals and not let the professional services dictate to you. This is important because advocates can easily be involved in a conflict of interest. Integrity can be maintained if clients are put first. Second, why should we do advocacy? I think the first reason is that advocacy has its roots in Christian history and theology. Williams has said, uh, Williams Profiles in Liberation, 23rd publication, 1988. Williams has said that Christ Christology done from below using the humanity of Christ has often yielded practical results in social action. Secondly, I think that there is a, a lot of fear in society through prejudice. Advocacy can help to get rid of that fear. That's Baiko, The Challenge of Black Theology in South Africa, John Knox Press, 1989. Thirdly, I think that every human being has rights. People are valuable in the eyes of God and people have the right to health and community and education. Nicholson, A Black Future, Trinity Press, 1990. People are valuable in the eyes of God. People have the rights to health, community and education. Fourthly, we need to advocacy. If the church is not going to make a mistake, what is the point of offering salvation when people do not see salvation socially? An example of this can be seen in the history of South Africa. The South African people experienced oppression from the government, but the Dutch Reformed Church in that country never helped the black people. Nolan, God in Africa, 1988. There are more reasons why we need advocacy. The fifth reason being Christians need to speak a universal message. People need to be told there is truth and hope. This is fantastic news for individuals and groups who are marginalized. Niebuhr, The Churches of the Disinherited, 1996. Sixthly, Christians should be people who try to build better communities for people. Uh, what better way than to fight for people's rights? Morberg of the Church of the Social Institution, 1984. Sixthly, people, people need freedom to be truly human. Advocacy can help people be fully human by helping people find freedom. Without freedom, we make people feel oppressed. Without freedom, we stifle people's creativity. Without freedom, we bring only despair. People lose their dignity. They lose all hope. Without freedom, we create isolation and oppression. We feed prejudice. Freedom is a sacred trust to humanity and we cannot let it be taken from any person or society. Freedom must be defended and kept at all costs. Hill, A Sociology of Religion, 1977. Seventhly, I think society is always changing. Advocacy can be an excellent way of bringing change in a creative way. Advocates can be people who bring new ideas and solutions to Firstly, Advocacy is needed as it can bring encouragement for oppressed communities. Studies have shown how communities need this practical pastoral like care. In quotes from Henderson Skills in the Neighborhood Work 2001. One of the neighborhood works task is to be, quote, one of the neighborhood works task is to be supportive both of the groups and of its individual members. The group particularly needs the support and encouragement of the worker at times when its energies and enthusiasm are low and it feels it has suffered setbacks or achieved little in meeting its goals. End of quote. But are there any arguments or ideas why advocacy should not be used? I think that advocacy lacks a theological base. Guterres says that we should forget about with the practice. 
Kuter is the power of the poor in history, 1983, page 214. I think this is unwise. I think as Christians all our practice has to be founded on a theology. If we say we have no theology, what we end up with is a bad theology and bad practice. Advocacy needs a strong foundation so it will have a strong practice. Next I think advocacy comes across as a given objective truth. Are all the principles of advocacy correct? Does advocacy theory not have an post-enlightenment view of humanity? I think it does. Post-enlightenment thought sees the value of being human in a person's status or rights. Biblical teaching sees a person's value in the light of God's love and mercy. Before God, human beings have no rights. All that we do have in value is given to us by God. Grace is undeserved. R.C. Sproul, Holiness of God, 2003, page 112. At some points, advocacy theory should not go unchallenged. There are no absolutes in human theory. Advocacy is a human theory, so it is not absolute. There are other problems with advocacy. Social issues are often complex and need a multidisciplined approach. It might be unwise for a person, however trained, to help another person. The reason being the advocate might not have the skills or knowledge to deal with the complexity. Also, advocacy works on the old model of thinking that rational thought can lead to social change. But we live in a postmodern age, which means arguments hold no sway. In the end, this means all social policy will not be made by well-thought plans, but merely by inclination. Bruce, Religion in the Modern World, 1998. For my part, having thought I think we need advocacy. The arguments against advocacy are weak. There is actually a theology of advocacy. Jesus was the best advocate of all, Mark chapter 7, 24. He often helped the weak, poor, and downtrodden. Also, advocacy might not always be always right, but it is a movement trying to do its best for the weak in society. Then finally, postmodernism is no threat because we all have minds and we all think so thinking debating reason will always be with us so let us use advocacy how does advocacy work let us look at race relations and see how advocacy works in practice first as an advocate you need to be informed there are thir certain things on ad certain things on advo an advocate needs to know in this area the first thing you need to know is the law Ancient Act was stated, then amended in 2000. This Act says it is unlawful to discriminate either directly or indirectly against a person because of race, colour, nationality or ethnic origin. This Act applies to employment, housing, education and services. Also you need to understand certain terms that are used officially or culturally. Black is a term with exploitation connotations. Discrimination is a term to denote a way of acting that deprives a person's choice. Institutional racism, this means a collective failure to provide appropriate professional services to people. Prejudice means acquired beliefs or values that make people biased to another group. This is just an example of what you need to know here. Perhaps the Declaration of the Human Rights for the United Nations on the 10th of December 1948 includes how we should be informed on this issue. Quote, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration without distinction of any kind such as race, colour, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, property, birth or other status. End of quote. There is also a history which one should never forget. For example, in AD 43, the Romans invaded Britain. In 2040, 240 AD, African soldiers served in the Roman Emperor's army on duty defending Adrian's Wall. In 1288 to 1488, there was a small Irish community in London. In 1290, Jews were expelled from England by royal decree. In 1530, Henry VIII banned gypsies coming to England. In 1550 to 1750, Huguenots came 
1863, slavery, slavery officially ended in the British Empire. In 1880 to 1914, Britain experienced a major Jewish influx. In 1945 to 1950, Hungarians came to live in Britain. In 1948, the Nationality Act was passed, giving UK citizenship to the British colonies. In the 1968 there was an influx of Indian migrants. In 1988 there was an influx of Somali asylum seekers. This is just a small example of the rich and important history of multiculturalism in British culture. This history helps to make us appreciate national diversity. But knowing about the law and the history is one thing. We need also to, to identify problems. There are problems of racial tension in our country today. A few years ago, Peter Hitchens gave us some idea of the racial tensions when he wrote an article against youths who persecuted a white brownie group. He writes, a brownie pack has been forced to leave the church where it has met for more than 20 years after parents and pack leaders ran the gauntlet of racist taunts and stone throwing from local youths. The results of the, the situation was that parents stopped seeing their children to the Brownies club. The local vicars ended up being assaulted and the local church of the Brownies was trashed. On top of this, the leaders were intimidated. What could have been done to help here? Once we know there is a problem, then there needs to take action. If I was an advocate for the Brownies, what would I do using the skills we have learned? about advocacy. Number one, I would tell them they are valuable. Number two, I would form a management committee. This would have local people on it, police, clerics, Muslims and Christians. Then we would use our combined strength on the issue. Conflict resolution would be a priority. Three, then I would go into the local schools and educate the Muslim children about the brownies, perhaps show them a video of what the brownies do education breaks down prejudice. Four, I would organize a day trip for Asian youths to come and see what the brownies get up to. Five, I would visit the Asian youth parents and let them know what their young people are doing. Six, I would provide some space in the brownie hall for the Asian youth to use if they had no place of their own. Seven, I would go to the council to ask for a grant to provide youth facilities for the youth. Eight, I would organize cleaning day on the community where the Asian youths and brownies could work together. And nine, so the Asian parents can meet the brownie parents all the time. I would be encouraging the small brownie group. Uh, sources for this uh, lecture are Vico, The Challenge of Black Theology in South Africa, John Knox Press, Glasgow, 1989. S. Bruce, Religion in the Modern World, Oxford University Press, New York, 1987. G. Guterres, The Power of the Poor in History, Orbis Books, London, 1983. P. Anderson, Skills in the Neighborhood Work, Routledge, London, 2001. M. Hill, A Sociology of Religion, Heinemann, London, 1977. D. Moberg, Church as a Social Institution, Baker Books, Grand Rapids, 1984. H. Niebuhr, Theology and Sociology, Castle, London, 1996. R. Nicholson, A Black Future, Trinity Press, London, 19. God in Africa, Paternoster, Grand Rapids, 1988. R. C. Sproul, The Holiness of God, uh, Reform Publishing, Grand Rapids, 1994. And D. Williams, Profiles in Liberation, 23rd Publication, Connecticut. 1988. I hope this lecture has inspired you to engage in advocacy. There's a lot of work to be done to get alongside marginal individuals and groups and to stand up for their human rights and I hope this uh, little lecture will encourage you uh, to get involved in advocacy in your local area. Uh, may God bless you and uh, I hope this um, video has been a blessing and inspired you to get to work in your local community uh, on advocacy issues. Thank you for listening and God bless you.